Hello and welcome to Gabriel's 3D Printing. Today we'll be looking at Baby Yoda from The Mandalorian, uploaded by James Journeywine. First things first is we look at the developer notes, see if he has any recommendations, and he says no rafts, yes to supports, a resolution of 0.3 millimeters, and an infill of 15%. So the resolution of 0.3 millimeters, which is the layer lines, may sound a little off, but we'll see why he, why he put that in a second. The first thing is download all the files. Once you have all the files downloaded, you should have a folder like this with a ton of STLs. Don't be scared because they all have a purpose. Now, uh, what the designer did is you can either download and print each individual part, let's say the head, hands, cloak, etc. Or you can download everything in one piece, which is this STL right here, Baby Yoda with body. That's the entire uh, little Baby Yoda. I highly recommend though, if you want a print with great accuracy, no defects, etc. Print each component separately. But considering this is a beginner's video, I want to make it as simple as possible. So we're going to just print the thing all in one piece so we don't have to hog glue anything at the end. So like I said, that's the Baby Yoda with the body. Click and hold on that, drag it to the slicer, and give it a few seconds to render. Once the model finishes loading up, you're going to notice one thing real fast, and that's that this model is gigantic. Now, the reason that this model is so big is, number one, the developer maybe intended it to be life-size, but number two, what I think is the better answer is that this model has so much detail that in order to print correctly, you do have to have a minimum size. As with FDM printing, there's there's minimum size for everything, minimum thickness, info, etc. Now, these fingers, as you can see, they're floating midair right now, meaning supports will be have will have to be placed directly underneath. And once you start the supports, this little tip, these two little tips, are going to have to support this entire hand until the hand gets fully connected to the body. Meaning there are going to be plenty of issues with these fingers if you do not print it at an adequate size. So, that being said, I do recommend you print the model no less than 50% if you want to have no issues with the fingers but considering i still don't want a gigantic yoda i'm gonna print it even smaller and you'll see what happens to the fingers in a consequence of me doing that So first things first, click on the model, and we're going to go to the second row right here, and we're going to make sure uniform scaling is on, and then we can resize our model. I only want it 35% of the regular size, so we're going to hit 35, enter, and that's going to scale our model down. As you can see, it is a lot smaller. The um, second thing we do is select the layer height. I want just standard quality, so I'm going to use 0 0.2 millimeters. Now, if you do want the model as good as possible with this size, I highly suggest also a super quality or a smaller layer line uh, height. But you know, for this purpose, I'm just going to choose a 0 0.2 millimeters just to show you what happens. Click on that, click on discard. And we will need supports. Like I said, hands are floating midair. Some of the ears are floating midair. We don't want that. So. Hit on generate supports and for your support overhang angle if you have a basic simple printer leave it at 45 higher end printers can probably go up to 60 so i'm gonna change mine to 60. support density i want the support as easy as possible to remove so i'm gonna set that to 10 percent this gives me a little less uh, dense supports so i can chop them off easier and finally support z distance i'm gonna move that to 0.26 so it just increases the gap between the model and the support by a little. 
bed adhesion, you really don't need any. You look down at the model, there's a large flat uh, area in contact with the bed plate, so we don't need any of that. And other than that, uh, we're pretty much set. Now, the developer did say infill percent. You can change to 15%. I'm just going to leave it as 20 because 20 is always a good info percentage. It'll save you some time if you lower it, but uh, I believe having the extra infill is always a good idea. So all I have to do now is hit slice and let it render for a little. Once it's finished rendering, you should be giving a time estimate of 6 hours and 6 minutes, but this will vary based on your printer. You should also be given a filament usage estimate of 49 grams, so we're going to hit preview. We're going to take a look around the model, see if you see anything funky or weird. And everything looks pretty good. Now this support right here is kind of floating midair. I don't know if you can tell. So it might give us some issues down here, but uh, you know that's probably just because of the curvature of the model. FDM printing, you know, is is good and all, but sometimes with supports, especially with uh, free slicers, there might be some iffy stuff going on. But other than that, I think the model should print pretty well, pretty decently. So save the file, send it to your printer, and let's go take a look at the time lapse. Here's the model with the supports still attached. Most of the supports are fairly easy to remove and shouldn't give you any hassle whatsoever. Here we see Baby Yoda with the supports removed. It stands at roughly 8 centimeters tall and is pretty good overall, other than the fingers of course. Sadly, because the model was very small and the fingers were so thin and flimsy, it did not print correctly and doesn't take away too much from the model but you know it could be a nice sore other than that everything else came out pretty good with the model and I'm pretty happy overall